Ladies and gentlemen, we have been challenged. As you know, in this channel, we build and sell lots of budget PCs. Well, a fellow YouTuber dared challenge my budget PC skills and invited me to a $250 PC build challenge. Oh, budgeteers, you suck. I'm so much better than you. I bet you can't even build a PC for $250 ever. Even if you did, I can easily build a better one. Hey, let me get in on that. And of course, I'm not one to say no to a challenge. Here are the rules. Stay under $250, no pre-builds, test with Fortnite and Apex, document everything, so show proof of each purchase, and here's the kicker, tax, shipping, and windows don't count for cost. That last one was a big mistake, my friend, and you'll see why later in the video. So the rules are straightforward enough, but I had to make it harder for myself to make it a little bit more funner. I decided in order to see how good my deal hunting really is, I would restrict myself within this challenge with a rule just for myself to only using parts that I already have on hand. So no parts will be purchased specifically for this challenge, and I will only use parts that I've already had when I was challenged. Let's dive into the build. Now, obviously with a budget of $250, we don't have too much to work with, but but I wanted to make sure that I had a good balance of aesthetics and performance and I, without making too much of a sacrifice in either field. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. The look we're going for is fish tank. Fish tank. Fish tank. If you watch my PC flipping series, you know that I'm a big fish tank case shill. Oh, that's hard to say. So I knew I wanted to build it around this look and it just so happened that I have a Game Max Infinity mini case sitting around from those crazy TikTok deal days back in the day. Now I would usually go with the DIY PC Cube 01, but I got this guy for just $35.34 pre-tax and shipping and all that. So it was hard to pass up for this challenge. Moving on for the rest of the parts. For the CPU, we got the Ryzen 5 4500. I got this one locally for $40 and even though I'm not a big fan of these 500 series CPUs, I mean like the 3500, the 4500, the 5500, at the price point of $40 that I got it for, it's actually not that bad. And most importantly, it works fine for this challenge. It's easy to keep this one cool. It runs just fine to play very budget games. And, and for a PC that's only gonna cost me around $250 to build, I'm not trying to sell this as a you know, modern PC by any means. It's just gonna be for esports games. So this is more than enough. For the cooler, we've got a nice Ryzen stock cooler that came with one of my many Ryzen Ryzen 3600 and 5600 purchases on eBay, so I'm gonna count this one as a zero dollar purchase. Since I generally advise going for a tower cooler like the Thermal Ride Assassin King, which is only $20, but I had to keep the cost low for this build and the stock cooler does a great job with this simple of a CPU. But I'm doing the zero dollars because most of the time I do switch out these stock coolers for the Thermal Ride Assassin King or X120 SER GB. And I recently sold a PC with a CPU that came with the stock cooler and I went ahead and dedicated the full price of that CPU stock cooler combo into that build so this one's zero dollars for the motherboard now here is one of the reasons that i said that that last rule of not including tax and shipping in the cost was a big mistake here's a motherboard that i found on ebay it's an azrock d450m pro 4 it's an matx case even though it was listed as atx but this guy even though i had this written down in my inventory sheet for 33 dollars, it was actually listed for 20 dollars before shipping and tax the reason for this low price is the seller identified that they have not tested it in a long time it's just been sitting around so they didn't know if it worked or not so they gave a nice price cut and i took the chance and even though i don't suggest you usually take a risk on motherboards per this previous video go ahead and watch that and learn why but i'm glad i did because for this challenge a 20 dollars b450 on motherboard is exactly what i needed or so i thought because it doesn't quite fit in the case but we're we'll get to that for the ssd we got the team group mp33 512 gigabyte M.2 drive. Now, this is nothing special, but I got this sucker used on eBay for $26.19, free tax, and it gets the job done. I usually suggest for PC flipping to at least get a terabyte these days. Just go ahead and give people the full terabyte. It's not that much more to add it to your cost. And with something like storage, it's not as easy to upgrade for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. It's not just like, you know, taking out a stick of RAM and putting it in there. So for something like storage, I would usually go for that, but this one gets the job done. I really did want to have an M.2 in there. I just less cables and faster speeds. I, I just think M.2s are the way to go if your motherboard allows it. For the RAM, now, this is one of the places that I was unsure whether I should just go for a cheap non-RGB or a cool RGB one like this Trident ZRGB series. And I decided because we had enough money in the budget to go for the RGB and wanted to go ahead and add this one. I, you know, I potentially thought about doing the CPU cooler with a tower, but there wasn't quite enough in the budget for that. And I thought, you know, an RGB RAM next to a stock cooler 
cooler looks really good. So got this one locally for $30. Well, it was actually 60 bucks for a kit of four. So using these two sticks, 16 gigs at 3,200 megahertz for $30, perfect for this challenge. For the power supply, we're going with the Asus Tough Gaming 450 watt bronze PSU. This one I got off of Newegg a while back and was on a nice little sale. And I wanted to go ahead and get some new PSUs for some of these really low budget PCs that I knew I would be building at some point. Thank you, Pass Guy. Now I went back and forth whether I should go ahead and use this one because as you can tell, this is the most expensive part of my PC build. But even though I have some really cheap PSUs laying around that I got on Facebook Marketplace locally for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks, and even though those would be better for this budget challenge and allow me to fit more, I, you know, I want to think about longevity. I didn't want to just max out in this challenge. And a lot of those PSUs that I got for 20 bucks or 30 bucks are like 700, 800 watt PSUs. And this kind of budget does not need that. So I thought, you know, let's just keep those for future and wanted to make room for that one in this in this build. And I thought, you know what, let's, let's give people at least one part that's new and that is the PSU, which again, in this video that I created where we talk about which parts to buy new versus used, I definitely suggest buying this new. So I went ahead and included the new. Also, these are sleeved cables, which is a lot more premium than most PSUs. So that would also help us save money on not having to put in some extensions. So there we go. And this one was $44.99. Free tech. And then of course, this case doesn't come with fans as most of these budget cases don't, but that's not an issue because we love the thermal right TLC 12 CS, whatever the name is. I got a three pack of this on Amazon for $13.90 before tax. And this is the perfect way to add some nice RGB and some cool, quiet fans, especially with that stock fan in there. We're going to need some case fans that don't make too much noise. And the nice thing is, is our motherboard has ARGB headers, so we can plug these suckers right in there. And, and the user of this PC will be able to sync up the motherboard's software with the, with the RGB RAM and the RGB lights. So there you go. Now for the GPU, we got an EVGA 980. That's right, a GTX 980 that I got for $30 locally a while back. I know, I know, a Ryzen 5 4500 with a GTX 980. That's not an incredible pairing, but you know, I don't know what PC Customs has got going on in his pairing. It very well might beat mine, but like I said, I really wanted to put some effort into the into the aesthetics. And I also wanted to think about my future build. So I probably could have saved some good money here by, you know, going for one of my cheaper PSUs that I have with way higher wattage and going for a case that already comes with fans and that costs way cheaper. And in that case, you don't even have to use a motherboard with RGB headers, all that stuff. But but with the parts that I had, this is what made the most sense. And usually the cheapest PCs I build are around the Ryzen 2600 CPU performance and the GPU performance is usually like a 1060, six gigabyte. So a GTX 980 is actually not too far off from that. So I think this works great. And look at this guy, it's it's ancient, but it has nice little, little white LEDs on it to just add more into this case. So I think it works great. Last but not least, I decided to throw in a Funko Pop in there because when you're building a PC this cheap, you really need to upsell the aesthetics. And when in my listing, I'm telling people that this PC is really only for esports gaming like Fortnite and Apex and Valorant and CSGO. I need to give them a reason to put this on their desk and keep this one for a while. Even though they might be able to put in, you know, a few hundred bucks more and get a PC that can actually play a lot more modern games or play 1440p, 144 hertz and a curved monitor, all that fun stuff. But this guy just adds a nice little pop, a Funko pop, if you will. Let's jump right into the benchmarks. First off, we got Apex Legends. This was actually my first round of Apex ever, believe it or not. And it's, it's a pretty fun game, I gotta admit. I first ran this at 1080p Ultra or High or whichever the highest is on this one. And I was consistently getting around 80 to 100 on average. And just wanted to leave some of this footage in because how I mentioned in my first time ever playing. Look at that shooting, wow. So we ran around, we got some kills. We, you know, I, we won the game. I got the last hit of the game. Yes, yeah, you know, no, no, no big deal. But anyway, we ran it back as a 1080p low to more concisely showcase a, a budget PC like this. And at that point, we were averaging well over 100 FPS, around 117, actually. And then jumped into some Fortnite. Now, I never play Fortnite, so please don't judge, but ran this at 1080p low as well. And later on in the game, you can see we're averaging around 100, 106 FPS, which is pretty good. Consistently getting over 100 FPS on, on a build like this for less than 250 bucks, I think is pretty incredible. And then I wanted to throw in a mystery game for you guys, and that game is Pac-Man. Now on Pac-Man, we got around 1,000 FPS. Now, I, I don't know, I just wanted to throw this in as a joke, so.
Now, of course, we ran into some issues with this build. Uh, one of the main ones, <laughs> as you can see, that I still haven't addressed is the, the stinking motherboard over the fans. In this case, I have a case review coming on this one. It's it's even, I'm pretty sure it's even narrower than the, cube, the DIY PC Cubo one. And as you can see, this is not great. I have never, ever in my entire career of PC flipping ever sold a PC where the motherboard hangs over the fans like that. But I wanted to show you guys the reality of what happens when you're PC flipping. And I definitely did this to show you guys the realities of PC flipping and not because I started the build and realized this issue and was too lazy to go back and fix it. Another issue was bent CPU pins. Believe it or not, this is the first time this has ever happened to me, but I stayed calm, pulled up a Jay's Two Cents video to show me how to do it, grabbed a box cutter blade and a mechanical pencil, put those suckers right back in and we were good to go and thankfully it worked. So there you have it, a beautiful gaming PC that is more than capable of playing esports games at 1080p low for just below 250 bucks. Well, if you've been counting, that leaves us with a whopping $6.29. And what did I do with that? I took my wife out to a nice coffee date. Yeah, absolutely not because it's 2024 and coffee costs like 10 bucks. Aww. If you want to watch me list and sell this on my local Facebook marketplace, go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and join along in the PC flipping series where I will list this along with other PC flips to see if we can sell. Thank you for watching. Make sure to go check out the videos from PC Customs and Casual Tech Review and see how they did their challenge. Channels are linked below.